Hey everyone, welcome to the Lake Michigan Angler Podcast. Today we are here with Captain Jim Stepp of Jaws on Charters and the president of Salmon Unlimited. Man, welcome back. Thank the you. legend is here Thanks with us. Thanks for having me back, guys. <laughs> and, and it's it's uh, interesting that Rob, with the introduction, there's quite a few more titles there in front of yeah, you. Yeah, I've been, been, been busy. You've been, been, been working yeah. since the last yeah. time I had you yeah. on yeah. here. Which busy. I don't think you... You weren't on last season. You were on the first season of the podcast, correct? Yeah, I think no. I think I was. Uh, or was it last year? I think it was last. No, it was the year before. It was, the year before. Yeah, you were in the, yeah. in the first in the first yeah. season. Yeah. yeah, we're on season three now. You got it. Um, so a lot has actually uh, changed. Uh, let's start with the the captain part, man. Uh, you are now officially charter captain. Yep, I'm officially a charter captain. Got all my licenses and uh, all my permits and all that stuff. And last year was my first full time year of actually doing a charter legally. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right uh, so uh let, let's talk about that because i don't i don't think you know we've had charter captains on um but we've never actually discussed that process and you haven't gone through that recently um what is that process like for someone to uh, be a legal charter captain well you know it is a bit of a process luckily we got a guy named mike fries Great guy. Um, he puts the class on here at North Point Marina. You know, and it was just a great class. It was a great experience. I think even if you didn't want to be a charter boat captain, just going down and going through the the rules of the road, let's say, of being out on the lake and proper procedures and, and all that stuff, and uh, just having that, that background of doing that. You know, I've been on the lake for 55 years. Believe it or not, I've been out there fishing for 55 years. I, I started when I was five years old with my dad. We were out, started fishing out there. So there's a lot of things in the, you know, the whole charter thing side of it. It's a different story. But just learning the rules of the road yeah. is unbelievable. There's stuff out there I had no idea what, uh, what I was doing. Right. But now I do. And now when somebody's doing something wrong, you're always right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so in order to do this, what exactly do you need to be legal? Uh, to do legally, you need to get your absolute license. And it's, uh, I think it was about a 30-hour um, course, maybe somewhere around there. Okay. Um, had to get your license uh, approved through the Coast Guard. Okay. You have to have a physical. Um, you have to have a drug, drug test, drug screening. You got to sign a consortium. You got to get on a consortium. We're on an annual drug testing program. Um, uh, through the state, there is another sticker there you have to get through the state, um, which is just as soon as you get your captain's license, it's a uh, protocol the, the of that. Sport fishing license? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. a license through there. Sure. Um, just, you know, several little things. It seemed like it took forever to get it. Wait, what was the time period from when you started? Uh, I'm assuming the classes were the first thing? Yeah, the classes were the first thing. Mike okay. puts a program together. It's uh, two, uh, fr two Friday nights, two full Saturdays and Sundays, and then the following one is your full-time exam, which is nice because you do the exam with Mike. You're not traveling to, uh, in the old days, guys used to have to go to Ohio, with the Coast Guard Station in Ohio. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was uh, a real task in the old days for the older fellows that, uh, you know, like the Bob Rosas and the Arnies and those guys, they all went to... Uh, to Ohio for their, their licenses, you know, we didn't have to do that. It was really nice for us. Yeah, and and and, and what are, what are the monetary kind of costs associated with just to get that yeah. all legalized? A lot of folks I'm going to say cost out of pocket probably cost me right around the two thousand dollar mark. Kind of almost all somewhere around. Right yeah, I'm thinking right on the with the exam probably about twenty two hundred bucks with uh, the physical and. And all that kind of crap that went along with it. Got yeah. you. There's a guy out there that, uh, I, you know, Mike helps you put the program together to submit your envelope because there's all kinds of little forms and documents that had to be gone through there. I know that the Coast Guard, if you miss one of those documents, you're shafted. You're going back to the back of the line, send all the documents in again and go. I paid a guy like it was 125 bucks. It was the best thing that I did because that guy said, hey, you're missing this form. You didn't sign this one. This one doesn't have your initial on it. Boom, oh, boom. to like review the package. Exactly. That, that's, that's very and, important. And he's a Coast Guard yeah. guy. He yeah. lives right across the street from the place. So he reviews your package. And it's a good thing for him because about five times he would call me up and say, hey, Jim, you missed this? You missed that? You missed this? All right. You know, <laughs> yeah. other guys I'm sure could did it on their own, uh, but I wasn't that intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it says you're, it's, you're a smart person when you realize you're – you know, yeah. uh, inadequacies and you can, right. Yeah. Well, I've learned lot, through life. I've had owned my own business for over 30 years that you have to hire smart people yeah. smarter than you yeah. to excel in your business period. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I think that's a big takeaway there. Yeah. So, um, you went through the entire process, you know, it's, it's a roughly around that two to two, 
2.2K uh, investment that you're making in yourself to obviously create a business. Um, the other aspects to this, right? You had to find a boat. What's the, what's the boat you're... So the first thing I wanted to do was I tried to do a different market, which kind of failed on me a little bit, but I bought a 28-foot Baja Cruiser. Great boat. I was trying to target four people, even though our licenses hold up to six. Right. I was trying to target four people charters, and then myself and a first mate, which was six people. In a 28-foot boat, I felt that we were okay. We were a little crowded ending with the four people. I missed out on a lot of different opportunities on charters through other captains. May have, he was booked. I can't give him that because he needs six people. Most, most 90% of all your charter boat captains are six people, and they get to six people because that's how people break the cost down of it. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys can't go out and throw the money all up on their own for him and his girlfriend or him and his two buddies or whatever. So, I, and I get that. So, knowing, finding that out, I made it through the season. Um, here comes uh, September. This, uh, is this this year? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. I made it through the season doing my stuff. I did around 30 trips, I guess it was somewhere around there, and uh, missed out about a lot of opportunities to do other ones. But, you know, I still do my um, tournament stuff. I fished yeah. over 17 tournaments this year, so it's, nice. I was very busy doing that, too. But I missed out a lot of opportunities on the fishing program, sold the Baja Cruise in September, and I just got my boat here uh, about two weeks ago. I bought a 36 Tierra. Nice, congrats. Yeah, so I'm, we're in the midst of putting that together right now, and we're going to have a really nice, nice, nice charter boat this year if we're going to have the six people out, no problem. That's awesome. And where are you ported out of? Waukegan. Nice. You know, I was born and raised in Waukegan, started fishing in Waukegan when I was a little boy. Been up and down the harbor. I've been in Kenosha. I've been in Winthrop Harbor. I've been in Racine. You know, I've been up and down full circle. I'm, I said, I'm going to start my business where I started in life. So that circle mm-hmm. of life almost, and I, right? <laughs> yeah, and I came back to Waukegan. That's amazing. And, and, and like, how many, and there's not, a, you know, how many charters are there? It's not many, right? You know, there's not a lot. There's only a few full time guys, a yeah. handful of them that do it full time, a lot of weekend warriors. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. um, I think North Point has a few more. And uh, definitely Kenosha you know, has got, got the, the whole most, yeah. program going up there. And Racine's got a few, uh, which are scattered up and down the river, not only in the harbor, but are up and down the mm-hmm. river too. But there's only a handful in Milwaukee. Great guys so far that I've I really didn't. I knew of these guys right. all through my life. You know, you know your Jimmy Goldbulls and your Dan Wheelers, and you know those guys. You've heard of them. Um, but now that I know them, hand to talk to them in the morning, just a bunch of great guys, man. Just really, you can understand why they have good businesses and why they have support and why they have their, what, what they have going on today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You and it, and, and it, it's actually a great kind of setup for this next question, which is, you know, you're a very accomplished tournament guy. We covered that in, in season one. In fact, if you didn't see our first interview with, with Jim Stop, we'll link to it because it's definitely great. We covered a lot of information uh, from the, angle of tournament fishing mm-hmm. right but when you when, when we talk about now running a fishing business or charter service it is a service business it is a service so, business yeah you know making that shift how do you how does your mindset change uh from personal fishing tournament fishing to now making sure that folks come on have a great time and you're able to get them on fish you know it's funny you said that because most charter boat captains when i told them i was doing this go you know you're gonna have to change your whole program <laughs> you're gonna have to change your whole this ain't about catching five or ten fish jim this is about catching a lot of fish so i start. i was laughing yeah yeah no problem well yeah there is a different mindset to it you know in the tournaments we're out looking for 10 big bites yeah you know when we're out fun fishing we're looking for 100 little bites or anything you know yeah. so, I mean, there was a different mindset to it but the best part about it is with me fishing these tournaments as many tournaments as i do in a year and as many years as i've been doing it there's nothing better than hours on the lake and believe me even when we're tournament fishing we're catching a lot of small fish too mm-hmm. you know so i just bring some of that philosophy back to the back to the my boat and we've had no problem this year. I mean, if you guys look at some of my Facebook pages, we put, whether I caught one fish or 100 fish, I still post it on my Facebook page, on my Jaws on Charters uh, Facebook page. Walk Keegan this year was just phenomenal. I couldn't ask for a better, a better year to go fishing this year. We had some great catches this year out there. We didn't have to run very far a lot of times. The fish were in close this year. So it was a great, great deal for me to be in Walk Keegan this year because the fishing was really, really good this year. Oh yeah, overall, yeah. It, when did you? When was? When did your fishing season start uh, with the service? So I didn't start because I had my boat and I had trying to get everything done. I'm a kind of an anal guy, so I, 
I make sure everything's picture perfect before I sure. leave the harbor. I'm not yeah. the kind of guy that's looking to, well, we'll put it together when we get out there. No. When I hit the water, and that's like a professional, or, or, or not a professional, but a, a winning tournament guy, yeah. you just don't go out half-ass and think you're going to win all the tournaments. you got to put all your marbles in a bag and make sure everything's as clean and straightened out. And I didn't do that. So I really start, didn't start fishing until the end of May. Okay. And, so even I, the, and at that point, we had the Kings were here. Yeah. It was like. Oh, it was just, I started right at the right time. I mean, it was a game on. Missed the big coho thing, you know. Yeah. But, Jesus, I mean, the first couple of days I went out there, I come in with my catches and the charter boat guys were like, holy Jesus, you're the hammer <laughs> around here. <laughs> I was just getting lucky like everybody else, you know. But, uh, I, like I said, I have a different mindset when I go fishing. I'm just not the guy that's just a half-assed guy. I'm a. People fish with me all the time, and they said, geez, you're a little more anal than the next last guy, I, but, you know. I, I think, and so so I've been on the boat with you. I filmed one of our earliest videos doing a tournament video right. on Do Jigger, um, and I think the common word that fi- uh, people will use to describe your t- kind of fishing is intense. I think yeah. that's the best word. Right, right. It's, it's intense. It is intense, and, 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 and that's and my not, wife and, doesn't go fishing with me anymore because she goes, <laughs> you're just too intense to have any fun. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I don't think that's necessarily a, inherently a bad thing or the, because I, I actually, you know, I was watching you observe, observing, but I thought it was very interesting and, like, you're just really focused. Like, you're in... And, uh, you know, I, I, I can appreciate that. And I can see what some people might get like, oh. You know, some people do. <laughs> I, the best part about fun fishing, I'm going to say, is taking customers out. Yeah. It's not as intense as that. But it is intense for me because if there are six people on the boat, my focus is catching 30 fish. Yeah. You know, my yeah. focus is catching 30 fish. Now, going up and playing with you and having fun and joking around and kidding, that's fine after we get to 30 fish. <laughs> up, to the, <laughs> Get on there, Ron. up to 30 fish up to 30 fish i'm working my butt off you know yeah, what i mean no, but, sure. uh, and there is times we have fun too i mean there's some days you can't catch the what whatever it is you know we will talk to 10 captains we and nobody's had a bite well i'm not going to pull no miracles out of it you yeah. know but but uh it is intense i'm in a more of an intense fisherman than a normal guy yeah and maybe that's why i succeeded so great in the tournaments uh, I mean, right? It, it, there's something to say about you. Obviously, something about your approach that works. Yeah. Right. And 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 then obviously specifically in tournament fishing, you know, being out of Waukegan though, it, it seems like in a great position though, because I mean, how impressive has it been for Waukegan the last couple of years overall throughout overall, the year? The fishing yeah. has been. I mean, it has been out really of all of Illinois. Yeah. That port fishing out of that port has been just great. Yeah. It's been an opportunity for shore guys, boat guys, kayak guys yeah. consistently. Yep. I think a lot of it's got to do with Waukegan is we don't have a lot of traffic out there as much. When I fished out of North Point and you come out of North Point, you got the wall right there, Wisconsin wall. No, so God. all the charters and all everybody comes out and hits the wall. And <laughs> and just going, rides along. And the, just rides the wall and then moves a little bit south, not crossing the, the wall. The, the wall, what he means, guys, is state line, state line yeah. the border. Yeah. You yeah. cross over into your Wisconsin water. Yeah. So they'll sit on that line going east or west yeah. and mm-hmm. it won't cross. So you get a lot more traffic up there, a lot more, you know, a lot more people working on those fish up there. Waukegan's great, man. I pull out of Waukegan, I look out, okay, oh, there's some three, oh, there's nobody there. And I shoot all the way down there. <laughs> I never even have to turn my boat around. I never even really look forward anymore once in a while just to see because there's not, we have traffic, but we have a massive area all the way from, you know, 10 miles to the south, 10 miles to the north. I was just going to say that that positioning of that harbor allows you to run a little bit north yeah. to the line or even cross if you need to. Right. But more specifically, Importantly, I think you're you're in a better position to go south for, the, for that bite. And there's no harbors down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah no nothing. boat launches. There's really no nothing. boat launches down yeah. there. Nothing. Those fish don't like see lures. Really untapped fishery down there. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Some of the kayak guys do beat them up. And shout out to uh, Frank, who who uh, where is, it? is it Highland Park or Winneka? Where is he launching uh, like that? I don't remember if it was probably it was one part. of the two down. Yeah. No, he was. I think he was further south, Winnetka. Winnetka maybe, maybe I'm wrong, yeah. but 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 anyway, like I think the the the, the last. And correct me if I'm wrong here. I think Montrose Harbor, between Montrose and Waukegan, there's no, there's really no big. There big, might be one. There's no a, big crowds of people on parking yeah. lots coming out. At least I mean, no. you go to like to there's Wilmette. not even parking lots. Well, Matt, I yeah. think it's a hundred dollars to launch your boat. Yeah. Wilmette, yeah, you're gonna weed people out by charging a hundred bucks yeah. to launch a boat. I'm telling you that. So, right now. so you have this couple miles of, of shoreline that yeah. these fish don't see anything, right? And so, being out of Waukegan on those days, 
you could shoot down and, and tag those fish. I and mean, quite a yeah. few guys do that, you know. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, th- we don't have the reef complex like Kenosha and Reese, uh, Racine and Kenosha have. And even with the harbor, you know, we don't have that drop off out there pretty quick and we can right. work up and down the hills and stuff like that. But we do have some nice reefs out there. Yeah. You got the Waukegan Reef, South Reef, Lake yeah, Forest yeah. Reef, Julian's. Mm-hmm. If you want to run all the way down, which I did a couple times last year, I went down to the R4. Oh, wow. Uh, fishing was tough in front. And uh, I told my clients, I said, hey, if you guys don't mind a 45 minute boat ride, we're going to go down and try to catch some fish. We went down there twice and just absolutely smoked them. Yeah. And we came all the way back. And it was a big boat ride. And I asked for another $100 on fuel. And the people had no problem doing it because we're getting all the reports from everybody else. And we smoked them down there. We came back. We were king of the harbor, you know. But we went all the way to the R4. It was, yeah. a, it was a hell of It's 18 miles down there. Yeah. So it's a trip down there. But as a tournament guy, 18 miles ain't nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's pretty amazing. And uh, it, it's always good to see, um, you know, more of the uh, charter boats around. You know, I, I think when you have people jumping into it, it's a sign of you know what's happening with the fishery here yeah. it's a sign that there's people wanting to come out it, i think it's a sign that things are looking good and healthy yeah. to see those you know um uh folks starting a business to, and and them having clients and uh, it's good for us as well, right? Yep. You know, I just wish Waukegan would get their butt together on their launch ramp over there. Oh, don't get me started. That's the brutal part. We, we don't know. want to turn this podcast I, I, into a B, I know. B rating. I did and it. I wish <laughs> I, did they, my, I wish I could get that figured out. Here's what I'll say. I did it on my own personal channel, link below plug, um, where I talked about the this year they raised the launch fee yeah. to $30 from 20 And, and they and, gave you less. <laughs> and and this this is this is my criti- this is my criticism of that, which is if you're gonna ask anybody for ten extra dollars, where's the ten extra dollars in amenities? Exactly. The fish to clean station is garbage. Junk. The brush rooms are horrendous. Yeah. And uh and I understand that there's a certain public safety safety aspect to it because they're rush- rushing people out there at night. Because you know, there are things that happen at night. We understand right. that. Yeah. But I also don't think that uh, anglers that are uh, should be penalized. Whether you're from shore, you want to fish from the pier yeah. at night. There's good fishing happening at night. You know, maybe there's a, a special pass that anglers get that allows you to be there versus people that shouldn't be there. You know, I don't know, but there's got to be something. Thirty dollars. There's got to be something that the Port District can do, and then Bay Marine because Bay Marine's got a lot of skin in the game there. It seems like these days, a skin in the game. There's got to be something those two people can get together and put some kind of program together yeah. for the angler. Yeah, and, and I, you know, even if you charged, if you did a yearly thing for a fisherman's pass, pier pass, yeah, the guys would be okay. I could put twenty for a year or whatever, just so I can fish at night, you know, or do. Yeah, there's and they can get money. Like there's so many different ways, like you said. And yeah. again, I don't want to drive into this, but it does. <laughs> it's something I'm very yeah. passionate about because I. I that I'm, you know, I fished that all my life out of there, you know, I, the kayak, and I stopped because I'm like, I can't justify it's, that. It's sad. Yeah. Hopefully, sad. hopefully things change. Um, that being said, um, well, that's awesome that you're doing it. You're going into year two. What do you think after year one of chartering? What lessons learned uh, are you going to roll into year year two and, and apply? Do you think? Well, obviously the boat size. Uh, I mean, okay. having this boat size, we canceled, I don't know how many trips last year because I really stood for a 28-foot boat. Now, don't get me wrong, the Baja was a great boat. Two to fours, I'm not having fun, and the customer's not going to have fun. And I had a few customers upset about it. We're not going out there? No, we're not. I mean, it just it was rough out there, and the Baja just didn't handle the two to fours. One to threes or less, we were going fishing. Well, as you guys seen last year, it was a little windy. Yeah, and August we definitely, rough, yeah. Yeah, and we had some problems with trying to get the boat out. We canceled a lot of trips last year over it. This year, we won't have to do that. This year, we're going fishing. You know, the, these uh, 36 tiers, three to fives is not uncommon to go fishing in. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's a pretty good threshold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. after that, so that's going to just eliminate all my cancellations that I was doing yeah. last year and fishing a little harder. I am going to step back a little bit from some of the broad range tournaments that I've been fishing in the past. Um, just to try to put this boat more in the maps, uh, the Jaws yeah. On boat, the Jaws On recognition and the history of Jaws On and all that stuff. And uh, just trying to put that more in the record books for people. So, and myself. Yeah. Make and, it more exciting. And, and uh, 
I'm guessing there's going to be a certain level of like learning a new boat and kind of how it's pulling, yeah, how it's working. Well, it's funny to say that because uh, as people know, and I've had a lot of boats, <laughs> it seems like every two years I'm like, okay, that one's done. I'm done rigging that one and getting all the, <laughs> getting all the stuff fixed up on it. It's perfect. Sell it to somebody. Um, I don't think I'm going to have any problems. I'm lucky enough, even during the year, I get to fish on other boats and I handle a lot, drive a lot of other people's boats and handle a lot of stuff. And, and through my tournaments experience and then being on, you know, top 10 boats out there fishing all the time and stuff, I see how, what works, what doesn't work and how I'm going to program my stuff. And I don't think I'm going to have no problem with that. Awesome. Plus I have a great boat. These 36 Tierras uh, is the staple for charter boats on the Great Lakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I mean, that's that's why I told myself this time, if I'm going to get it, I am not messing around with anything else but the staple, and that's this is the boat to have out here. That. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, um, refer referencing back to when Rob introduced you, you mentioned Captain, and but he also mentioned Salmon Unlimited President. Yeah, so and this year, Jack Oles was our club president for the last six years. He did a great job. Uh, it was time. I've recently sold my uh, my daytime business about two years ago and uh can kind of read half some i retired jack wanted he was there for six years he wanted to step down he did like i said did a great job and uh i've been in the club for 15 plus years i've been a board member for 10 plus years i was vice president uh, been up and down the alley i've you know the whole thing so i know pretty much well ins and outs of the whole thing of salmon unlimited and uh, illinois then i decided this year that you know what i'm going to take that job on and and try to turn this thing, try not turn it around, but build off of it again. You know, Salmon Unlimited has, at one time, we had 2,500 members. They did two meetings a year, one down in the city, one down up north here. Obviously, things have changed fishing-wise uh, for the people. Uh, we're up to 350 members now. We've been about, that's been stalemated there for about three years now. Um, my goal, really, in the next couple of years is to try to get to 500. Uh, pick up another 150 members somehow and uh, put some programs together. This year we're trying to get a veterans outing together this year. Mm -hmm. That's something Salmon and Lemon Illinois hasn't done since the 80s, believe it or not. Um, we changed our format for our club tournaments around. It's not more just a handshake and a, you did a nice job today. There's actually money involved this year. Um, so I got that pushed through the board and uh, we're going to have a big outing for that. Um, I got, got a lot of good visions uh, yeah. for this year and uh, the next couple of years. So I'm, I'm hoping I can uh, step up and make the club great again. Yeah. So a uh, couple of different things you touched on there that we could dive in a little bit on, which um, one with with uh, membership and uh, even more broadly, I think this applies to any all, all other clubs, but where, where do you see the opportunities for onboarding new members and growth in that area? Where do you think that lies? Well, <laughs> You know, we've been stuck at doing our meetings at one place, which is in Elk Grove, for the last 15 years. I've been involved in it. We've been down in Elk Grove, a couple different places there. we got a great place now, T. Woods Bar and Grill down there, Thornwoods Bar and Grill. The guy down there is a super nice guy, and he gave us a beautiful facility to have our meetings down there. Really nice, clean. They have a, a bar there. You can have food there. I mean, it's really a nice, nice place to have our meetings. So that's number one. Number two is I, I'd like to maybe have a couple meetings north something we haven't done in the past. Maybe have them down at the Yacht Club at the North Point Yard. Uh, yeah, North Point Yacht Club down there with the Barbie Yacht Club. Maybe have a one or two meetings down there try to get some of the people up north up here that are in our club that won't travel down to Elk Grove on a Tuesday night. Right. And I understand that. I live in Palatine, and I'm just trying to go, you know, 16 miles. It takes me almost a freaking hour to get there in the traffic. I understand that. But I think if maybe if we had one or two meetings a year up here, we may be able to bring some of those people that, or in or maybe in the club or want to be in the club into that. Number two is just doing more outings, maybe like the veterans outing, uh, letting people know that, hey, we're doing something. Mm. My One of my big things I'm trying to c get going and trying to figure that out is two things, the Waukee cleaning station. For starters, you know, the North Point cleaning station, Salmon Unlimited had a lot to do with that. We invested a lot of money. Those tables, sprayers, all that stuff is all from Salmon Unlimited, Illinois. All the money that's uh, your membership for Salmon Illinois has been going into that cleaning station now for about seven or eight years probably. We paid for those stainless steel tables we put in there. Last year we came in and put the boards on top. Um, I was down there mid-season, put all new hoses on and new sprayers on there and stuff. And, it, you know, it just takes time and money, you know. But that's what your membership fees went to, stuff like that. Well, that's great for the guys in North Point. But what about the guy in Waukegan? 
What yeah. about the guy down in diversity? What about those guys down in the South? I would love to start working on the Waukegan cleaning station, for starters. You know as well as I do that thing's crap. Man. I go over there. I don't use it because we clean our fish in the boat when we come in. But when I go over there and I'm always asking, how's it going today with the cleaning station? As the garbage cans fouled up a fish and it's falling over the side and there's fish piled up all over. It's just crap. You can't have that thing like that. Yeah. I would love to see Bay Marine, which I believe is most of that uh, owns that cleaning station anyway, that area right there, let us facilitate, come in there and help us clean that deal up and get that thing working. I think if Salmon Unlimited was to do that, Obviously, people are going to see that. Hey, maybe I should become a member of Salmon Unlimited. Same thing down in Chicago. I don't fish down there. I don't go down there. But I do get a lot of reports from down there. They don't even have a fish cleaning facility no. down there. Nothing. No. Not even a cleaning board or, a, you know, nothing. nothing no. Why can't we go down there and try to help pr promote that too a little bit? Mm -hmm. I think things like that, um, we're giving it back to the fishermen, the Salmon Unlimited guys. We, we may be able to get some more members off of that too. Got you. Um, and then uh, you briefly mentioned uh, as far as the club uh, tournament stuff, you, what, 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 what's, uh, what do you guys got going on with that? So this year, you know, our club tournaments, um, we usually have uh, six tournaments every year and a makeup date. This year we're going to go to five and one makeup date, but this year is better than ever. We are going to have a boat of the year, which we always have every year. And normally every year a boat of the year, he gets this, that's the guy who culminates the most points in the five tournaments. Uh, this year, I think it's the best of four. Um, he gets to get a plaque. This year, we're doing it. We're going to get a plaque too, also, but <laughs> money's involved. It's three thousand dollars for boat of the year this year. Two thousand dollars for second place, and first place is one thousand dollars. To in order to be into that program, though, we are asking for you to pay up front for all five tournaments. It's fifty dollars a tournament. Two hundred fifty dollars. You have to be paid up by May fourth. May 3rd, that evening, your $250 to be into that program for the season. If you don't, you will not be eligible for the boat of the year money. And the boat of the year money is $3,000, $2,000, $1,000. We're also having our weekly tournaments on their dates that we have listed, and we probably put that on the notes too. We have a nice sheet built for that, Okay. Um, for the dates. We're also putting on there is uh, – it's $500 to win a tournament, $300 and $150 with a $50 entry fee. So if you say, hey, man, I can't fish all five tournaments or six tournaments or four tournaments, I, I can't do that. And we get that. Still come on out and play for a one-day tournament. It's going to be a $500 to win that tournament that day. This is guaranteed money. This is not complete, a, a communicate, uh, what do you call it, communicate. Com What's that word I'm looking for? <laughs> Commutative? No. Accumulated yeah. boats. Okay. You know, how many boats it's there is. It's not based on the entry fees. Yeah, exactly. How many boats there okay. is. This is, all, this is all guaranteed money. The club is guaranteeing this money this year, the 321 mm -hmm. and the 500, 300, 150. We're guaranteeing that money. We're also having a fish of the day. So one fish will be counted. It could be a steelhead. It could be a brown trout. He's going to be worth $100 for the biggest one of that day. And we're also having your big three. So if you have your big three, if you have a coho, a king, and a brown, and they're worth 20 points each, you get three of those, that's 300 bucks. So if you were out there and had a great day, you'd win $500 for the tournament, $300 for the big three, and $100 for the $900 you could win off of a $50 entry. That's pretty good in today's standards for a club tournament. Yeah. After that, the, uh, we have a nice lunch. We have a cook that comes out and cooks every, for all our luncheons. We have a nice lunch. Nice cleaning facility right there to go clean your fish after you're done. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a great year. We've got a lot of interest already going for the club this year, uh, the club tournaments, just because prior to this, you would pay a $40 entry fee uh, on a tournament. You would win roughly about $80. And uh, if you were lucky enough to catch the big three, you would catch $300. You'd get $300 for that. But this year, though, we went from 10 fish to 5 fish. Okay. We are going to a five fish format. It worked for um, jackpot. It worked for the brawl. So we're going to take them same rules. And we're going to run it with us. We are going to have the five fish deal. Uh, normally we have a grand slam points deal. We took that off the table this year. We're hoping that smaller boats now could get involved and, and compete with the forty footers. You know that's what our big goal is to bring some smaller boats into this. And being a five fish too, a guy could go up by himself and win it. 
he don't have to have three guys. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, you in know. The prior, yeah, we yeah that before, earlier. you know, with the 10-fish deal, well, geez, you got to have at least three people in the boat. Yeah. You know, two people. You can't get by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Legally. Well, this time now, you're into fight fishing, and you're doing good in the series, and your buddy's got to go to his daughter's wedding. Hey, I can still go out there and keep us in this game, yep. right? Mm-hmm. I can go out by myself if I have to and keep this in this game. One thing uh, different a little bit about the brawl or something like that is, you have to be an SU member to, to play the game. And an SU membership is $40. You can sign up online. Uh, we have through our website. We have a great website built for it. All our rules will be on the website here shortly. If not now, they're going to be on here very shortly. They just got the, we just set all the rules the other day. We're trying to get ahead of everybody else as far as payouts, rules, dates, and all that. So we've pretty much all got our, our, our deal all lined up for that. Uh, it's going to be a great year. I hope I hope people that decide... You know what? I've never been in some tournaments. This might be it. Maybe I can go check this out. Reasonable, and I can still go out and have some fun. L- let me ask you: um, for the person that's you know listening to this, that um, is hearing, hey, you know, become a member of SU Illinois. Could you explain or touch on like why should someone? Why would someone want to become a member? What are, what? What is SU Illinois about? You know, where is their money going to so they have a better idea? Um, because it's not just the, the club tournament stuff, you know? Sure. And I exactly. think some people don't know the full context of what, right. what the club's mission is. Right. So the club's mission is to, it's, it's dedicated to fishermen. And at the end of our, dedica- our mission statement is to have fun. And that's what we, and, and to, to teach and to learn and to more about Lake Michigan, we have a seminar every Second Tuesday of the month is our club general meeting. And at that meeting, we had great speakers. I mean, just some great speakers, not only about how to catch a fish, the lake itself, the uh, lamprey We had just had one, a great person off the Coast Guard came out. Uh, the DNR comes out. We get four or five great speakers every year. Uh, your Dan Wheelers, your Jim Mueller's, uh, Arnie comes out. Uh, we just great speakers and we talk about fishing um, at the tournaments. After every tournament, the top three boats, mandatory, they come out and tell us exactly where they caught them and how they caught them. Uh, it really, you know, when I first started fishing the club tournaments 15 years ago, I didn't know. I was a great fisherman, and I thought I was doing some really good things. <laughs> and then I went to a tournament, like, oh, man, this ain't too good. I'm not doing so good. Look at these guys. <laughs> but you listen to those guys, and you get reports, and, hey, man, that spoon, that flash or fly, you know, oh, man, how'd they run that? They're running it, what, doing it, what with that? You know, <clears throat> next thing you know, you're winning tournaments and you're boat of the year and you're, you know, you're that guy now. So if you decide that that's the angle you want to do, then you go out and you, you join the clubs, whether it be us or SC Wisconsin. <coughs> SC Wisconsin's a great club also. They got a lot of stuff going on up there, a little bit more than SC Illinois, but we're trying to catch up to the, the, the what those guys were doing up there as far as... Uh, the amount of time they donate to different things, yeah. Um, the weir, the cleanup stations, the life preservers they put out, the homeless, the you know, I mean, there this just goes on and on and on. Yeah. What SU Wisconsin does, SU Illinois, we're trying to do the same thing, but we can't do that without great members. Yeah. You know, we need great members to do that. Luckily, like I said, right now we're up to 350 great members right now. There's only a handful of those members that actually really step up and do a lot of things. You know, uh, behind the scenes. And hopefully this year we can actually bring some of those people to come up and help help the people that's been doing a lot of work all these years, you know. Yeah, it, it, it really is and can be a, uh, almost like a uh, cheat code in the sense that, uh, you know, you really open yourself up to a network of people yeah. for that information, for that help, well, yeah. I mean, guidance. Through, you know, through me being in a club for this many years, you wouldn't believe how many friends I have in the fishing community. I would never have had that kind of network and all these people that I look at that I look up to or people look up to me I I would never have that kind of you know shell yeah. and all that kind of people yeah you know, and it's not I just a, a network of people to get fishing reports from if you have boat troubles you got somebody to help you with that yeah. you know yeah. I mean all I, that kind I, of I, stuff I, I, you know I even know of, of folks that got in the club uh, befriended each other through fishing yeah and then because everyone has a life outside fishing, right? You work very businesses. People start yeah. networking outside yep. of fishing in their businesses. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and yeah. you know, personal growth and, and uh, you know, and, and opportunities. Yeah. So there's, 
you know, you, you use the fishing to connect you in so many different ways that can expand you and, and yeah. what you have going on, which you is cool. Get into well. the club, come to the meetings, come to some of the outings. You're going to be like, holy man, I went from catching three fish to 10 to yeah. 20 to mm -hmm. I'm a charter boat captain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yep. I mean, it, yeah, it, I mean, you really, really, that it arc, really, it really, really. Through the clubs, it's just I've been a I'm an TU member, Trollers Unlimited member. I'm an SU Wisconsin member. I'm an <clears throat> SU Illinois president now. Be going to these things and learning and listening and talking to people. It's just amazing how much more funner the catching fish is and networking with people and just you just don't go out with it, your pants down. I, when I kind of go fishing, I got a plan because I've talked to several people and say, Hey, how's it going down here? Oh, they're going up here. Hey, I know, kind of got an idea where I'm going. And it, it's like anything. We only have so many hours in a day to go fishing. Just to pull out and go fishing is a little tough. Mm -hmm. You know, to go out and have an idea where I'm going fishing or how yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so much easier. It helps out tremendously. Oh, my gosh. Tremendously. Yes. Absolutely. So let's talk about, uh, let, let, let's go back and talk just more broadly about fishing this year. Your thoughts on how the year went. Uh, uh, salmon fishing on Lake Michigan. Salmon fishing, so I got to, luckily, you know, I fished uh, from Door County. I was up at Sturgeon Bay during Salmon Ram. I was up there for the nine days. Uh, fishing was a little tougher than it has been. The cold water had rolled into that reef, which happens a lot up there to that big reef up there. We had a lot of cold water roll in. When that does, it freezes those fish out, and obviously they move off of there. Uh, it was too cold? It was too cold. It was, it was like 40 or below? Yeah, it was cold. It wow. was like 42 degrees, 44 oh, yeah. degrees. Yeah, that's not... and, yeah and, the, and the salmon, they just get froze out, so they're off of there, you know. Um, we had two unbelievable days up there where the north wind came in, and up there the north wind is what it's all about. North wind blew that warmer water in, blew the cold water off there, and we had two unbelievable days. I think we caught 40 uh, kings both days. Wait. Well, wow. run, wait, run that back. You said yeah. the north wind blows yeah. water. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're. Because okay. we're farther. Because we're farther north. Well, okay, but I'm, I'm thinking. Of, okay, let me <laughs> let my brain settle on this. You're already at the top of the lake. Yeah. Pretty much. Wouldn't the the, the further north you are, it's the colder it's going to be, right? Wouldn't it blow that cooler water? Yeah. I don't know the philosophy of it. Yeah. And I may be wrong too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying. I may be I'm wrong too. To but I know two days they had a massive wind change and it was so rough out there the two days we were out there fishing, the first three days. After that, it was game on. I mean, we just smashed the Kings up there. This year, you wanted to be all the way up at, at uh, the island up there. Uh, start oh, Washington Island. Washington oh, Island. Yeah. This year up there, all the Kings were up there. I mean, those guys were, uh, RJ and those guys, they were catching 50 or 70 Kings a day. Throwing 20 pounders back one after another, log after log after log back. And that's interesting because Last year, Salmon Ramo, we saw all Sturgeon Bay was smoking the big ones, right? They were in the top 10. I was there last year also, and yeah. we just had a blast up there. We caught, we were there for six days. We caught 147 kings, what? one coho, and one lake trout. <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> let, let me ask you this What is it about that area that drives at least what we saw in the last couple of years? And to my knowledge, you have more experience up there. But in the last few years, you know, I would consistently, and I use Salmonorama as a gauge because I don't fish up there. Right. Um, but so that, during that week, we'll see them, you know, Spike. out of the top 10, six of them are from all from Sturgeon Bay catches. Yeah, right. So what is it about that, that area that seems to drive those kings up there? And generally speaking, it seems to be bigger on average size kings that are up there. Well, I really think they just got a lot more reproduction up there. You know, we only have our stockings here, but the reproduction up there, so they're all staging from those big harbors up there. Well, yeah, and you've got you know? the Strawberry Creek where yeah. that, that gets the biggest Wisconsin stocking. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a part of it, too. you got Sturgeon Bay, the river the river that comes out mm -hmm. there. I mean, they're all just, they're just yep. pre-staging up there. But they're all on that bank. The bank mm -hmm. up there is freaking incredible. I mean, you just drive all of a sudden, choop, straight down. And then the people fishing on that bank, if you've ever been up there, it's just like... Well, I heard it's like a conga line. You oh, just, my God. It's, <laughs> you better be heading north inside... <laughs> And you head south outside. So you go down a bank, and you turn, you come all the way down. You don't turn and go back into the bank again. You'll be chopped off. You got to come down, and it's this big, big, long circle. Up so the guys just, like, pull lines and just shoot back up, just get back in line? Some and people do, but most of us, because you run the bank early, fish roll off the bank in the, in the uh, later morning. So mm -hmm. coming back the other way, you actually pick, them, picks them off. You catch them the other way, too. A lot of times they'll catch more on the second round coming off off the, outside the bank than the inside the bank because you're fishing the inside in the dark. You're leaving at harbor at 3.30 in the morning. 
no doubt about it. It's about a half hour run out there to the bank. Oh, so it's a little bit of a mm-hmm. run. Yeah, it's not right there. It's about, I don't know, seven miles out there, maybe eight miles out there Yeah, to the bank. Wow. And then, and then you, you're bank. launching somewhere in Sturgeon Bay. You got to. Yeah. There's just if, you're going, if, you're, the if you're launching in Sturgeon Bay, you got a little ways to get out to yeah. get to the lake. To yeah. The lake. But this year was cool because I did go to Egg Harbor. I fished up there. Uh, we were just trying to diff, different uh, different places. So we went up there. We went to uh, Kiwani. We went to Algoma, which was really cool because I never fished a couple of those old staple towns. You know, I mean, you go into their restaurants or bars, and it was all this cool old fishing stuff. Uh, Algoma did, was a little tougher because I think every freaking charter boat in Lake Michigan is in Algoma. I never gotta, seen so many they, charter boats. They have a big charter population. Oh, there. my God. The whole place was charter boats up yeah, there. Yeah, really? Oh, Unbelievable! I don't know how many boats are there. So that that's really interesting, right? Because I would I would presume here that if there's that many charters there, clearly there's some good fishing. That you right. know, there's obviously a lot of people that yeah want to go out out of that yeah. area. What what is it about Algoma? Again, we need to make we we, need, we really need to go up to some of these places, Rob. And like you should check it out because I tell do you, a you video like Algoma. I think Algoma has that bank reef that yeah. goes all the way up to Sturgeon Bay. Yeah. So it's all kind of part of the same thing, the same okay. fish in there. Now, it's not near the, as dominant looking as it is in Sturgeon Bay. Yeah. But it's, it's like our hills here. You know, you start and went to Parber down by the hotel, well, a little bit of something going on. Yeah. But by the time you get up to the lighthouse, holy moly, there's really something going on here. Yeah. You know? And it's the same way up there, too. It's just a lot longer, I think, than it is here, mm-hmm. our hill here. Yeah. Got you. Um, so... Any differences in terms of uh, how, how you're fishing, maybe some of the lures? You know, like we, we've noticed just when talking from folks or hearing from folks, you know, on the Michigan side, they're using, uh, they might use, you know. They'll use a lot more spin doctors than we do. Or like you know. run more blues yeah. blues on their flashers. Well, it's funny you know, because like little things I'm like fortunate that. enough that I get to fish over to Michigan four, four or five times a year or two. Yeah. I go over there and play. It's a whole different lure setup over there than we use here. Right. I, you know, I bring all this. Oh, I'm going to go back home with this flasher fly combination. Can't catch a cold with it over here. <laughs> or the other way, I'll bring my. Oh, I'll bring some stuff over here. I go over there. We can't catch a cold on it over there. So I don't know what that is, but it's a different fishery over there on our side. I could tell you one thing. It seemed like for on the Sturgeon Bay, Algoma, Kiwani, Flasher Fly was definitely the thing. A Flasher Fly, not a Spin Doctor. Flasher Flies was definitely our number one thing to catch. This is fish. July time frame. What, this what? was during Salmon Rama. I only go during Salmon Rama. So up there. middle yeah. summer. Yeah, it's well, kind of like July the first week mm-hmm. of July, second week of July. Second week of July. Yeah, yeah. Flasher Fly by far was really hot up there. Mm. Seems that's where we caught our bigger ones. Caught a lot on spoons. Caught a lot on spoons too, but the bigger fish were all caught on the flasher flies up there for us. Did you also run? No, I just accidentally bumped you. That's oh, I thought you were just touching my legs. You <laughs> wanted? I don't know. Woo! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> um, okay, so that that's pretty cool, and and this is something that you know we got invited to go up there with. Um, Oh God, who Al Johnson. Johnson, yeah. yeah. We didn't yeah. Get he was fishing it. up by us too. Yep. We we kind of networked with Al when we were up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We gotta we gotta definitely get that experience and more importantly document it on film, you know, to just to, to see, see all that. the boats is like, what the hell? Where's this guy going? <laughs> What's that? Cut him off, cut him off. Also you look over and you got one board inside your board. Well, this don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds yeah. like it's kind of combat fishing. It is true combat fishing. Really? More than I've ever fished anywhere in my life, you know, because you got that bank. And if you're the inside guy and there's a guy trying to overtake you, okay, yeah. you say, hey, I'm at 1.8. This guy's trying 2.3. He don't want to get too far out. He's going to get up and he's going to start edging you. Next thing <laughs> you know, you're up over the bank. And when you're up over the bank, you're full of zebra mussels and this crap. And I mean, the bank is pretty steep right there. So you don't let anybody put you over the bank. And that means running your your boards inside his boards. That's what it takes. What uh, What's the – like – like here on top of the hill, you're at 60, 70, whatever, 80. What's the, as it banks off, what's the So top it's about, then? let's say it's about, well, it could get up to 40 feet pretty quick. And 120. So it's a pretty, okay, it's, so 41, it's a, 20. It's a damn good bank. Yeah, it's way more bigger wow. than uh, than our bank is here. Yeah, way bigger bank than it is here. So that makes sense about them edging you. And, and when you come back to the outside, you're at 200. I mean, that's just, boom, right there. You're just, mm-hmm. you know, you're about quarter mile. Yeah. From that forty feet to two hundred, yeah. you know what I mean. So it's right. It's pretty close. Oh, that's pretty it's pretty close. Pretty interesting. That'd be cool to fish out of a kai. It's uh, so there's a long run to get. No, to. I know, I know, I know. You wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
No, you got a no mothership. Way. Someone put it on the boat, drag it out there. Yeah, the no image, way, all the boats man. confused about what's no happening way. out there. Like, what no. is this guy doing? No, here? I've never seen a guy in a kayak, and I spent many hours up there. I've never seen a guy trying to tackle that in a kayak, man. You'd get run down. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, because we're talking not ten or fifteen boats. We're talking hundred plus. Wow. I mean, they're, they're coming, and they're coming from Bailey's. They're coming from Sturgeon Bay, and they're coming from Algonquin. Well, Algoma. Right in there, you know. Yeah. A lot of guys start in Algoma, they troll all the way up past Sturgeon Bay, they troll all the way back to Algoma. There's your eight hours. Go in. Man, that is you know? very interesting. Same thing as Bailey's, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went up to Bailey's this year, too. It was cool because I was kind of on a port trip. <laughs> you know, hey, the fishing's not good anywhere. Let's just go check them all out. We went down to Kiwani, like I said, Algoma. We went to, you know, Egg Harbor up there, Bailey's. We're in Sturgeon Bay. The only thing I didn't go up to the rock up there, I wanted to go up Washington Island. I just, we just didn't go up there. We had our, we had our motel rented already for a week where we were at. So we kind of stayed within 40 miles. So we just put the boat on the trailer and we came back every day and every night. But we left about two o'clock every morning and went to bed at 11 o'clock every night. And towards the end, I had a couple of my uh, crewmates. They weren't doing good. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't doing good. Actually, the last day, one didn't get up. I'm done, Jim. I'm done. I go, oh, I'm still going, boys, so I'm going without you. So <laughs> I made it to the whole I made it to the whole thing. But So uh, bringing it back to our area then, um, just your thoughts again on, on what you saw in terms of, of Yeah, as of far as fishing fish, went yeah. to Lake Michigan. So like I said, I was able to fish. I fished port several times this year, Milwaukee. Uh, I was out of Kenosha several times. I was out of Racine several times, Waukegan. I thought fishing was just great everywhere I went. You're going to have some people say, oh, it's the worst season I had. Well, maybe you should have went to some more of the club tournaments or club meetings and got a little more handle on what was going. Stop by Lake Michigan Angler, ask what's being hot, being caught out there and stuff. I thought this year was phenomenal. Everywhere we went, we just knocked it out of the park. You know, fortunately, I found, met some guys through Salmon, through the clubs, stuff like that, and the tournaments. Seamate, uh, Ted Fody and, and Dominic and Jake, his son. And I started fishing with those guys the last four years on all the big tournaments, all the big money tournaments. We didn't have a great season this year. We had an okay season. The year before, we had a great season. Uh, but we didn't have a really great season this year as far as the tournaments goes, all the tournaments we won. We did win a few, and we placed in just about them all. But, uh, but fishing was still good. It was still good. For an average angler, when we come in from all these tournaments, you see everybody's catches to see what it is. We had a lot of good catches this year. Well, it makes it harder to win a tournament when the fishing's good. It is. You're exactly right about that. And Break that down. Well, yeah, because, because anybody the, can catch them. Anybody, <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to be good to catch fish. You know, you just got to be lucky. A couple lucky ones and stuff like that. So Rob's right, and I think the fishing was good this year, and it kind of hurt the big tournament guys, the big dollar guys. I mean, look at the guy who won the jackpot this year. Look at the guy who won the brawl this year. Mm -hmm. Never even heard of these guys before. You know, normally it's your rainmakers, your phoenixes, your you know, uh, Jim boat, Jim jaws on. Seamate, you know, that's usually when you hear the uh, stormtrooper. Those are the names that are hog gone. Those are the names you usually hear. Did you hear those names anywhere this year in the big tournaments? Nope. nope. Because everybody went to five fish, which helped out a bunch, and we had great fishing this year, which really helped out a bunch. Everybody caught fish. Yep. So, so in essence, is it level the playing field to an extent? Absolutely. I think the five fish really brought leveled the playing field, just killing those five because. Normally, like anybody, you know, you know, when I was younger and I went, I still pulled five fish, you know, and if you got five fish, you got a chance of being yeah. someplace, being yeah. somebody, you know, beating somebody up to be, be up there in the top, yeah. you know, I, and as like Rob said, I just think fishing was overall was good. Every port that I went to this year was just great fishing. Yeah. You know, we caught fish, cooler fulls of fish everywhere we went this year. It was really, really good. Yeah. What are your thoughts on uh, King specifically in terms of uh, numbers and size? Well, thankfully, some Kings did stay around her this year. I don't think they blew right by us and, and took off up north. Yeah, they really stuck around They the stuck summer. around longer. Yeah, they, and the whole summer. Not just the beginning, the whole summer. I mean, it was our some of our last trips was the beginning of September. Uh, obviously, we're out fishing for those lake trout, you know, because uh, that's what we have down in Waukegan in September. And uh, I would catch our lake trout, our limits of lake trout, and I go, hey, we still got, we're, we're down in an hour and a half on, you know, all our lake trout. And I said, hey, you guys want to try some silverfish? I'm going to run back into the 100-foot range, and we'll throw a spread out for a couple hours. I was still catching a lot of silverfish 
in September. In September. There was nobody yeah. fishing for them. And nobody was fishing for them. Yeah. Most charters, you yeah. know, they go out, pull their lake trout, and they go in. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little different. I'm out there to go fishing. You know, not only do I want to do a charter and I want to generate revenue, but I still I don't want to go in. I want to go fishing. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that's, we're five hours into the charter. <laughs> well, you guys want to hang around for a couple more hours? I'm in. The poles are still out. Let's go back to fishing. I just love fishing. I could stay out there dark to dark every day. It doesn't bother me, you know, so I... Normally, my five-hour trips turn into a hell of a lot longer <laughs> just because I want to stay out fishing. There you, you know? go, folks. If you want extra yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, I all just, you got to do is, just, listen, just, hey, hey, Captain, I, don't you really want to go fish some more? <laughs> sure. You know, I always tell people, you got anything going on this afternoon? Anybody got to take a pill or anything? Because uh, I'm, really, I'm, still, I'm still fishing. If you guys want to fish, let's fish. Isn't it hard, day. though? I, I can only imagine on the charter side of this, you're on a really good bite, and the clock expires. You're like, on one side, it's a business, right. it's a service, it's right. a, you paid for the time. But for the personal fish, I'm like, I don't want to leave the well, bite. It's on fire right, right. now. Like, it'd be and, hard to leave, and, right? And I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just that guy, yeah, you know. And I get uh, some flack off of other charter boats like that. You know, hey, 11 o'clock, let's play back at 11 o'clock. It's 1230. Well, I was having fun. You know, I was having fun. My people are having fun. We're all having fun. Doesn't cost that much more gas to troll for another hour. It's when a runtime is where all our money goes. Mm-hmm. You know, our yeah. number one killer for any charter boat is the fuel tank. Yeah, he's the number one. Uh, he's the, takes more money than the slip fees and the, you know, haul out fees and the winter storage fees and all that stuff. It's the gas. I mean, it was, yeah. it was five something a gallon this year down there in Waukegan, but it was more than that. It was in North yep. Point. Racine was the cheapest place around. But one reason or another it usually is, mm-hmm. and the guys in Kenosha. Most of the big guys pump their own gas, so they don't need. They take their own fuel. They could get their own fuel dropped off to them. So, yep, which is a hell of a lot more reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. But those guys in Kenosha, they have to drive more, I think, every day than anybody else because they got to get past that hill. Uh, yeah, and and you're in like 50, 60 feet of water for a while. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, I, I think it's like four and a half miles or so, roughly, yeah. to get to. But here's the thing. Here's, here's what's also unique about Kenosha, though, is like you're in that fifty to sixty range for a while. Yeah. But then once you hit like 70, it drops really. There's like a yeah. really sharp drop. Then it goes from like 70 to 100 in a really quick span. Yeah. So it is um, a very unique uh, in that you can hit that. That's a sharper drop than even the North Point. North Point, it's you hit 80. Oh, yeah, because you're talking about the hill is sharper. Right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The sh- it's a sharper drop. It, right but out just of getting to it. But get, yeah, and then the further it is your north of Kenosha, it gets worse and worse. Yeah. I was gonna say, could you come out of North Point? You're get get on a plane for a little bit, bulls crap for two minutes, and you're there. Yeah, I mean North you Point know? basically is, you know, the stretch between North Point and the hotel. Really, the hotel is the, the sharpest drop off in the whole state of Illinois. Yeah, but there's nowhere to launch there. But really, North Point itself, it's just a hair over three miles yeah. to get to the, the like eighty. Yeah. yeah, and North Point, you know, they got a really nice launch ramp there, a nice clean parking lot. You know, I mean, it's. SU Illinois has invested some money there. The pavilion next to the cleaning station, SU Illinois not only funded that, they built that by hand. We all, Mm -hmm. about 15 of us went out there and built that thing, built the whole thing. We had an engineer come out, and one of the guys donated the concrete, and one guy donated the time to to flatten all the dirt out, and then SU Illinois funded the whole project. So that pavilion there you see there is Mm -hmm. funded by SU Illinois. It's over uh, between the pavilion, the fish cleaning station, the boat launch itself. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a great. There's ten, ten, ten lane boat launch. Yeah, it's very nice it's boat nice. launch. That boat launch. You don't have to worry about a malfunctioning gate. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That with uh, Illinois, the gate was been broke all summer. Yeah, and all, <laughs> down in. <laughs> we uh, who was it uh, on a prior podcast? Brian from Big Lake Little Boat. I think he said it. It was one. One. There was a period out there when the gate was broken. They had to have a, an attendant do it. And they said they were waiting 40 minutes because the line, they were just taking their time. <laughs> I, I would have just quit fishing. Well, you know, for, for, since I was there all year, most of the time the gate was just up. Yeah. And when you went and launched it, the security guy would come over. You got a pass? You know, you have a pass? Well, yeah, I got a pass. Or you got a coin or token or whatever it was. They told me at the marina last year that they were going to get swipe cards for it. That's what I heard. Same kind of card that we use to get mm-hmm. in and out of our marine gates. They were going to do that. No, I never seen it all year. Let's hope they do something better this spring. You know, or just launch at North Point, or, or just launch at North Point. Right, yeah. right. 
Yeah. It's, only 10 bucks. <clears throat> yeah. It's and I would less. think when they see declining numbers there, they may start saying, hey, we better do something over here, if it matters to them. That That's the that's the, uh, that's the the question there. I, 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 when I did my video on that uh, situation, you know, I did my research and due diligence and the, I guess, was it the Harbor Masters at the, whoever runs it, the GM of the. Yeah. Of the thing, you know, I, I found his LinkedIn, very public information. And, you know, I, I read his background and, well, he's a sale guy. Yeah. You know, no right. fishing. Sailboat it's all guy. sailboat yeah. guy. Right. All sail, very extensively. Mm-hmm. And there was a period last year that we talked about. It was public. No secret there. Where they were trying to implement a, essentially like a tax on there. No, there was a quiet time. Were you aware of this? Yeah. Oh, they were trying to get they were that trying quiet. To get that, yeah. No, no motor started back. up till after 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> The blowback on that was yeah. fast and furious, and I and they it didn't last long. And there was also some kind of like a cooler tax or something. They were gonna have like a ice machine. Was well, they did put up some ice machines on a couple okay. of the big docks. Um, of course, the charter boats were right over there trying to get our buckets filled all the time. And then they came up this big thing. You're only allowed to have a small cooler uh, to fill with ice, so all members could use the ice machine. Because most of the time you went over there, it was empty. You know? Yeah, well, I guess it's kind of fair. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably should have seen I that coming. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, uh, I you know, you know we gotta call ourselves <laughs> yeah. out. You know, right. I can see the captains right. hogging all the ice. Um, right, but yeah, that was that was pretty insane. To, you know, to believe that you can't start engines before eight a.m. or whatever it is. Like, it well, kills all yeah. your business, your your businesses and stuff right. like that. But um, yeah, that's the bad part. Well, I shouldn't say the bad part. Good and bad. The guy is a nice guy. I've talked to him a couple times. He is a pretty nice guy. Um, he does come from, I think, California, mm-hmm. um, yep. which, you know, is what it is. But uh, <laughs> but you're right. He's more into the sailboaters, into so. the private boaters. Extensively. If you look, read his LinkedIn, the it's all on LinkedIn, guys. Yeah. You want to research it's, it's I mean, they even, they even, for the commercial guy now in Waukegan, we have to pay another $350 for our commercial permit to be in Waukegan Harbor. So that's got, something else they came up with this so last you got year. So a tax. A tax list. That's, that's, I think that's what I was referring but, to. But... They did put us on their website, <laughs> charter boat, the charter boat uh, website page. Oh, okay. Oh, they did put us on there, so like they are promoting at us. At the yeah. bottom of the links? Right, yeah, very, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's micro print? Exactly. Yeah, they Need did a do, charter service? Yeah, yeah they did Get do a microscope yeah. to look for it and yeah, stuff? Yeah, they do do stuff like that. Oh, that's amazing. But the guy does, um, we uh, have a, our annual kids tournament, and we have it in Waukegan Harbor in September. And prior to the new regime that's there now, Man, the guy was so open to us. It was take the whole harbor, you know, great. And then the new guy come in and they shut it down to just a few docks. Now we only have some a small area to fish. Thank God he let us do that. And anybody under, I think it was anybody under five or seven years old had to have a life preserver, which was not a bad thing. It was kind of a, I kind of liked that idea when they came up with that. Because I think people walk around the dock with five and seven-year-old kids. Yeah. We've all yeah. had them. I mean, it's yeah, a little young for fair. that. Yeah. Now, yeah, I think that was fair. We did have our tournament there this year, the kids' tournament there. I think we had 85 kids show up again this nice. year. Um, and they did welcome with open arms. A lot of tenants gave a lot of good reports about us, how we ran the tournament and stuff. And uh, so I think that may help us next year uh, to opening up a few more areas for the kids. But uh, the kids had a blast. I mean, them, them guys, them little guys just have a blast. And it's a Gobi Fest. Yeah. I mean, it was nice because they're cleaning the harbor out with Gobies. I mean, I think we had one kid weigh 85 Gobies. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so I mean, it's fun. just, and yeah. then, you know, Don't let them get into a big, those blue, uh, bull gills that are in there. Yeah, uh, right, yeah, there's yeah, some yeah, big, yeah. There's some big fish There in was there, uh, so. one salmon caught, uh, I think one or two salmon caught again this year. And it's usually the older kids, the 14, 15 year old kids yeah. catch them and uh, they win some nice prizes and stuff. But uh, it's always good. Always good to see the yeah. kids get an opportunity to get you know exposed to that yeah. stuff for sure. Yeah. And it. that's another thing the club does. Do you remember? Once again, yeah. there we mm-hmm. got some great members that that tie that do their time and uh, and uh, it, it's a great thing for the fishery, you know, for say, because this is what brings people in with their fishing licenses, right? Yep. When they turn sixteen, they're the ones who are going to buy their fishing licenses, and that's what's going to, you know, bring that back into the, back into the regime. Yeah, absolutely. Was there any other club stuff you wanted to mention before we? Uh, sure. Uh, a couple of things we're going to have here is uh, we have our annual swap meet every year, and this year is Saturday, February twenty fourth. It's at uh, eight six zero one West Fullerton Avenue, River Grove, Illinois. Um, if you are a SU member. You will just get, you're just getting your renewal membership letter in the mail. I also stuffed one of these flyers in the mail this year. 
Um, so we have some tables available. It is a $5 entry to get in per person to get in the door. Um, last year, we had about 250 people walk to the door, uh, pretty good size. We had about 90 tables uh, that were filled up. We got a lot of tables uh, left over right now, uh, but they're starting to fill up fast. So if, uh, if you're thinking, hey, man, maybe I get me a table this year and get rid of some of this uh, stuff that I got down there, I can give you a, uh, let me see, is John's phone number on here? Maybe we could take a picture of this and you can put it on okay, your We can always link the information in, in, down okay. in the video description. Yeah, I'll put that on there because I don't see, I just see his uh, address on here. Yeah, maybe we'll get a picture of this and get it posted to you guys. But it is February, February, uh, Saturday, February 24th. It's just for 7 to 11 a.m. Uh, there is some food there and some coffees there, and it's at the uh, Moose Lodge there in River Park. Secondly, in April, we have our Tuesday, April 9th, we have our annual pizza vendor night, uh, free pizza to everybody. We buy about 25, 30 pizzas. We usually have about 100 members show up to this thing. It's our big fund, uh, fundraiser. The uh, swap meet is our biggest fundraiser of the year um, because of the table uh, sales. Uh, our, but our annual pizza vendor night and award night, that's the night we give all our awards up in the year before for the boat of the year, rookie boat of the year, um, all them guys, stuff like that. Uh, this year, we got Dave Engel coming for Best Chance 2. Him and Hunter's coming. Um, so hopefully they, they put on a good presentation when they come. They always bring a lot of good stuff for us to uh, donate, to uh, put on our swap tables. Jack Oles, our uh, recent club president, he took over being the chairperson of this event. He's a great guy for it. He did it last year. I don't know if you guys made it out there last year or not for the event. We had a lot of stuff for on, the, uh, on the tables for um, uh, for the uh, – raffle big raffle i bet you the table was probably geez 60 feet long and we probably had i don't know 30 buckets for tickets on there so we had a lot of stuff to raffle off we got a lot of great vendors that raffle off a lot of stuff give us a lot of stuff for our raffle once again these are these are club fundraisers um this is what we do uh to, to raise money for our club so that's going to be a big thing like i said dave and uh, hunter engler are going to come Good speakers, a lot of information, a lot of knowledge both those guys have. Um, really good good stuff there. And that's about it for the rest of our stuff this year. Uh, I think we are going to be having, which we're in the midst right now, of working on our veterans outing this year. It's going to be the day after uh, the SU Open, which I believe is going to be on the 23rd this year. Uh, and by the way, all this information is on the website, which, yeah. which is, uh, you want to let them know the, the yeah, website. Yeah, the SU well. Open is on, this, on June 22nd. The SU Open is a Salmon Unlimited's open tournament. You do not have to be a member to be in that tournament. You just come sign up and uh, you're into that, into that tournament. That's on the 622 and our Veterans Out is gonna be on 623. And if you're interested in donating time, maybe a boat uh, to bring some veterans out, you can get a hold of me uh, through my email address and I can just tell you what that is now. Yeah. It's jawson1 at gmail.com, J-A-W-Z-O-N, numeral one, at gmail.com. You're more than welcome to reach out to me anytime about anything through for club uh, ideas or club sponsors or, or anything like that. Uh, we would love to talk to you. I'm a talking kind of a person, so <laughs> I could talk, talk, talk for... Makes for a great podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, uh, and then the, the official SU website, so people can actually get the information. Yeah. You guys are going to post us all, all yeah. this up there as well. Yeah, our official website for is Salmon Unlimited Illinois is our official website. Okay. Yeah, Salmon Unlimited Illinois. So... We'll link to it down below as well. Make it easier yeah. for you guys to, to grab all this information. Uh, Jim, man, uh, awesome talk, man. Congrats on on the, yeah. the personal stuff you got going on, as as well as uh, you know the the SU Illinois baby that you are now in, in charge of and, and yeah. uh, working to. Can I just talk about one more thing? Real yeah. Quick? yeah. <laughs> okay, so I am on the board for the Southwest Challenge Series. Um, Ted Pody and Dominic has taken that over from Craig Bender uh, years ago. So with the SU, uh, the Southwest Challenge Series is going to be alive again this year. They decided to have it again this year. It, it's a 
peg leg or a, uh, another tournament that's a sub tournament, all the big tournaments, SU Open, Super Sweeps. He's going to be on one of the brawls, I think, this year. We're going to run along that. One of the jackpots. It's up in Milwaukee at Bruce City. Uh, S, uh, the Kenosha Classic, it's going to be with there, too. So the Southwest Challenge Series is going to be alive this year. For anybody saying, hey, is that Southwest going to be here this year? Yeah, and we really hope some people come out and support that. It is a sub-tournament to all the rest of the tournaments. It's another way for you to catch, catch and win more money. Cool. For that too. So if I didn't say nothing like that, Ted would be upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man. Uh, again, like I said, amazing what you what you're doing and all that stuff. Um, for charters with you, where where website for that? Yeah. So I do have a Jaws on Charter Services dot com, or you can look at my Facebook Jaws on Charters, and I got a really nice Facebook page you can get on there too. But like I say, Jaws on with a Z. I, I had to differentiate myself from a band. <laughs> was, plus the Z kind of gives me my own uh, yeah, thing. You, you know you never did ask me though and people always ask me how did you come up with that name and I think uh, when I'm actually we have a hook and line for our SU Illinois paper that gets out every, every month we're actually going to have a little section in there how did you get your name so I wanted some people to actually write an article about how they can't name your boat everybody's got a name on their boat and how'd you come up with your name I'm, 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 I'm for I'm, Phil's boat I, no 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting at. <laughs> yeah. Because you have some pretty uh, interesting names like Yeah, and how'd you bent, come up with that name? Get yeah. bent, a box stuffer. I mean, yeah. Yeah. How'd, you, how'd, how'd you come up with that yeah, name? Yeah, no, that's, you know? yeah, that's. I came up with my name, Jaws On, back in the 70s when the movie Jaws came out. I couldn't even go in the swimming pool. I would barely take go in the <laughs> tub because I was so scared of that. Uh, we were out fishing. We were way offshore that day. I remember it was like it was yesterday. We were way offshore. And I had a hit of all hits. And this thing took out more line and was screaming and screaming. And I looked at my buddy, I go, I got Jaws on. Uh. And my buddy looked at me and goes, man, that's a great name for a boat. And it's been like that yeah. since the 70s. I probably had 20 boats named that. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to think. Things like that, like in the hook and line, our, our monthly newsletter that yeah. you're asking, mm -hmm. What's, cool. what do you do if you're a member? You get the, the newsletter. A lot of good information in there. We got a great editor now that's doing the hook and line. Stuff like that, things like yeah. that I like to put in there. How did you come up with your name? So if anybody's out there and you got a name of a boat and you're like, man, I want to put a little article, send it to me and I'll make sure it gets on the hook and line. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be there's a lot of for cool sure. There's a lot of cool names out yeah, there for yeah, boats. Yeah, you know? yeah, A lot of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, man, Jim, always a pleasure to have you here, man. Uh, again, congrats on everything. Appreciate your time. Uh, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode here. All the information that uh, was discussed We'll link to it uh, down below in the description, uh, as well as links to uh, Jim's uh, charter service. You want to get out with incredible fishermen, so and uh, you probably get an extra hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, so if we ain't got that, the box uh, stuff by then, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, go ahead and give, check them out. Uh, check out Salmon Unlimited Illinois and the benefits to that. Um, they're doing some good things, and uh, it's always good to uh, have a network for yourself. So. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this with a fishing friend, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.